Hey guys, how are you doing? So recently I was invited by 91 Springboard, which is a co-working firm, to come and give a talk about Web 3.0. Because I've been in the space for quite some time, so they wanted my thoughts and they, they've uh, they had invited a lot of entrepreneurs to come and listen to me. And this was, um, like I had the content for a three hours talk, even though this was a small one and a half hours talk. So uh, what I've thought now is I'll convert all of the things that I had, um, you know, taken in my presentation to the to the talk or to the event, and I'm going to create YouTube videos on that uh, content. So this is some uh, about 30 slides that I have for you here, 30 slides, and we'll start slide by slide. So this is. Uh, everything has been laid out on a big board on whimsical right and we'll go slide by slide i've uh, organized them like slide one slide two slide three and so on till slide 30 and it's all uh, organized on a board and by the end of this complete series when you've seen all of these slides i'll share the link of the board also with you so you'll have the whimsical board uh, to refer later on uh, now web3 there's a lot of stuff happening and it's very confusing for some people and there's a lot of uh, confusion in the market as to what Web3 is. So I found this uh, this image on the internet which shows Web3 as an amalgamation of, uh, you know, buildings in, in, in a virtual space. Like, you know, you've heard about having buildings and spaces and people buying land in the virtual space. And then you have these NFTs, these sculptures and these NFTs, right? And in, the, in, the, in Web3, people talk about um, these sculptures as well and NFTs as well. And then you have uh, coins, bitcoins, bitcoins or any cryptocurrency. So Web3, people think uh, they're, they're not really getting a clear idea on Web3, what Web3 is. It's, is. Is it NFTs? Is it cryptocurrency? Is it buying land on the metaverse? And this is why I gave this talk so that everybody could be on the same page and uh, understand exactly what's happening with Web3, what is the future opportunity, where is it all headed and what is it exactly, what exactly is it? Um, so the, the, I just want to show you this picture that this is the big confusion that people have about Web3. And let me try and uh, slowly uh, with each slide, we'll try and uncover and remove the fog away from what Web3 is. So let's see what it is. It was basically Web1 was highly centralized. Web2 became a little distributed in the sense these nodes that you see here are uh, independent companies like you have. Uh, you know, Facebook, you have Twitter, you have all these companies that started coming up, they started becoming these power points, like, you know, points of power. Uh, and still things were centralized around those companies, right? With Web3, everything became decentralized and you have, uh, you, you see this uh, blockchain kind of a format here, which basically means that Web3 is going to be on blockchain. So with Web3, the data, the, the storage of the data is on blockchains mostly. And that's what Web3 is going to be all about. All right. <clears throat> now we we have I have a few diagrams like these which kind of help you you know get a clear idea on what's happening with Web 1.0. It was just read only. You could just read these from these websites like Yahoo, MSN, all of these websites. And Web 2.0 became participatory, in the, but it was centralized. What participatory means is that you could create content on YouTube, you could cr cr create content on uh, Twitter. So it had a two-way interaction. That was Web 3. But uh, web, that was Web 2, right? So Web 3 is a little more. Web 3 is, uh, <clears throat> it's not centralized, it's decentralized. There, that means there are no intermediaries. And it's not just participation. It's also ownership of your own data. So I, I don't know why they've not written it here, but basically Web 3 is about ownership of your own data. So whenever you move around between different applications in Web 3, you will own the data uh, you know yourself you want the data won't exist at a centralized server of let's say Facebook or Instagram also the power that resides uh, it, it does it's not but the power is not centralized in the sense Facebook um, could potentially just block you and your account could be you know uh, you could basically not have an account from the next day Twitter could block you and YouTube could block you right but with Web3 that's not the case. Everything is decentralized. No, there's no central power. There's nobody in charge. Nobody's saying that, hey, uh, you know, remove this user from this platform or ban this user. So that's not happening here, right? So uh, I'm sure now you're understanding what's happening here. Uh, the Web3, the definitions that I'm giving you right now is, uh, and, the, and the kind, the way I'm explaining to you is, is for everybody, right? It doesn't matter if you're a designer, engineer, or um, uh, an entrepreneur. Uh, the, the way I'm explaining to you is going to be for everyone so that everybody can kind of understand at a conceptual level what, what's happening right now and, and where things are headed. Uh, in between, there will be more references for engineers because 
I'm an engineer and this channel is about engineering. So there will be more references about engineering. Um, but then that's that's about it. But otherwise, the content is for everybody. All right. So <coughs> one more uh, image I have for you is that with Web 1.0, you had username, password. With Web 2.0, you, you had um, the ability to log in using Google, Facebook, Twitter. But the problem was that the, your data existed with Google. You couldn't use the same data on, on Facebook or same data on Twitter. You had to go to all these uh, websites and create your own accounts and your data existed with them. So they owned your data. Now think of it like Udemy, right? Uh, or YouTube. Whenever you upload something on Udemy, uh, you don't remain the owner of the course anymore. So that's what you sign when you accept the conditions when you're publishing a course on Udemy uh, or Skillshare, any of these. What you're saying is that the content does not belong to you. It now belongs to Udemy or Skillshare, but that's not what's going to happen with Web3. With Web3, you have ownership and you have transactions and you have flow of value in the sense you're always basically uh, having your wallet around. Uh, if what's happening with, um, if you've used the Brave browser, what's happening is that they're giving out attention tokens or BAT, the Brave attention token, BAT, BAT it's uh, getting traded on multiple exchanges. What's happening there is that the more time you spend there, uh, instead of them showing you ads, you uh, or, or for free, you basically get uh, money based on your attention. So if you see any ads, you get paid for those watching those ads. <clears throat> so uh, there's ownership of data. There is uh, value in the data. There's you know transactions happening with Web three, all of these things. And um, with uh, if you've if you've seen how blockchains work, basically everything is a transaction, right? In a blockchain, the the way it's stored it is interact uh, is transactions. Okay, now here you had Web 2.0 companies and then there are these Web 3.0 companies that are kind of almost doing the same thing. Uh, what I also want to uh, point out here is that uh, for every Web 2.0 company, they will be almost like a clone in Web 3.0 and they would do the same things, but they would do it in a Web 3.0 flavor. Uh, so let's say with banking, you had Revolut and TransferWise. With Web 3.0, you have Trust Wallet. With SMS, you had Messenger. Here you have Discord. And browser data, like I showed you, you know, you had Chrome and now you have Brave, which pays you with bad attention tokens uh, so that you basically get paid to um, view ads. Ownership, you had bill of sale uh, or invoices or whatever. Now you have, now basically you can own, um, you know, uh, you can own NFTs on OpenSea. You can go to OpenSea, you can purchase NFTs and uh, those NFTs are highly unique. So we'll be talking about N NFTs much more later on. And we'll also be talking about IPFS, which is the interplanetary file system. But I want to show you how almost all of these companies have a one to one mapping. Even with gaming, there's a lot of stuff happening with gaming. Gaming, you had Second Life here. Now you have Decentraland, which have mana tokens, which are getting, uh, you know, again, traded on multiple exchanges. So what's to be noticed here, what's really interesting is that all of these companies will have a Web 3.0 counterpart. So if you're an entrepreneur or a developer or a designer, uh, you can keep that in mind. You know, that's a that's a big opportunity right here that every Web 2.0 company is going to have a uh, similar Web 3.0 company. Now, all of these products that I've just shown you are operating at a um, application layer, right? So on, on the blockchains, there is uh, an application layer where you create those dApps, decentralized applications. If you work with Ethereum, you probably know what dApps are. You can you know, create your own smart contracts. We'll talk about dApps, we'll talk about smart contracts, we'll talk about how these smart contracts work on the blockchain. But if you already know these concepts, then you probably know that uh, these are just applications uh, uh, working at the application layer. But the, the deeper you go in the blockchain, the more money you can make in the sense, the more important you become because you own more of the infrastructure. And we'll talk about that as well, right? So this is just the first slide. This is just the first video. I'm just getting kind of getting you warmed up uh, with with the whole idea of Web three. Now, what can you do on the uh, on the web? With in the past with Web one, you could just read, read. With present, you could just read and write. And with future, you can read, write, and own digital assets. So that's why when you own digital assets, you are basically using your wallet everywhere around. If you want to buy pictures, so what Instagram is saying that uh, the images that you put out online right now, they you will be able to convert them into NFTs, so people can purchase or Im those images as well. Or think of it from an OnlyFans perspective, right? You could buy those images; they'll be unique for you. <laughs> those will be NFTs. So a lot of use cases are coming up. Things are warming up, and uh, but things are happening very fast. So if you don't catch the bus right now, uh, it might be too late. So this is why I just wanted to start off uh, with this first slide. And in the next video, you'll see the second slide. 
uh, which will and slowly will get just more and more interesting the whole uh, presentation all right so do subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video